Hey YouTube, I'm Delana and this is the TechFlex. And today we're going to be talking about how to use Neatcode to study for software engineering interviews. So, if you watch my video, how to become a software engineer at a top tech company, then you know that the most important step is practicing interview questions. My favorite platform to use is Leetcode. What's really cool about Leetcode is that a lot of those top tech companies that you hear about pull their interview questions straight from Leetcode and it makes it so easy to practice and prepare. What I also like about it is that it kind of evens the playing field a little bit between people who have degrees and people who are self-taught or boot camp students. Anyone is able to take the time and practice these problems so that they can get well enough to land their dream job at their dream company. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm on leco.com and I'm going to go ahead and sign in. If you're new here, you can go ahead and create an account down here. I created an account specifically for this demonstration. Okay, so once you're all logged in, you'll be taken to this main page here. And honestly, I don't really do anything on this page, so we're gonna just jump right into the problems page right here at the top. So as you can see, Leco has well over a thousand problems, and you wanna make sure that you are picking the right ones to practice. There are different ways that you can go about picking problems. So the first way, which I think is the most beneficial for people who are at the beginning stage of the lead code process, and also people who are still learning data structures, is to kind of go data structure by data structure. And you're able to do that by utilizing this tags feature right here. So what you can do is select the specific data structure that you're currently practicing. So if that's um, binary trees, you can just go ahead and select that. And then it'll take you to a list of problems for that specific data structure. After that, what you can do is sort by the level of its difficulty and just kind of practice a few easy problems to get you started and then work your way up to the mediums. So it's really important to start off with the easy problems because lead code can be very difficult if it's your first time using it. And the easy problems will feel difficult at first, but you will get better with time and you'll be able to move on to the medium problems. And once you can comfortably do medium problems, depending on the level that you're interviewing for, you may or may not want to move on to hard. Personally, I think that if you are interviewing for entry-level or university roles, hard-level questions might not be necessary. But if you do want to you know, give it a try, then of course, the more the merrier. Also, while you're in this phase, if you are going data structure by data structure, just make sure that you're always testing yourself on the things that you learned previously so that you don't forget them. The next method to picking problems is using the top liked question. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to that problems page. And you can go over here to top liked questions. If you are a premium member, you can also sort this list by frequency so that the most frequently asked questions within this top 100 liked questions list will be listed at the top. So that's a great tool if you do have the premium feature. But the reason why I like approaching problems using this list as well is because it's important to familiarize yourself with the most common data structures and algorithms questions. So the next method I'm going to discuss to help you pick out problems as well is utilizing online lists. And um, a list that I found that was pretty useful is this list by Sean Prashad. And I really liked how this list took me through a lot of different topics. I think that just like the last method, this is a great method for people who are past the phase of learning data structures and are kind of just reiterating what they're learning and practicing and starting to prepare for applying for interviews. I just like the way that the list is organized, has a very nice flow and it feels really natural as I'm practicing. So this list is definitely recommended after you feel like you've learned data structures really well and that you are comfortable with being asked any type of problem. So the next method I'm going to discuss to pick problems is by using the company filter and I feel like this method is definitely the most helpful for soon-to-be interviewers so if you already kind of have an idea of the companies that you're interviewing for this is definitely a great way to navigate practicing for those specific interviews so what you can do over here on the right is click on the company that you are interviewing for and if you have premium you will then be taken to a list that looks just like this of all of the interview questions that people have said they have been asked for that company. And then using that list, you can then sort by frequency if you have premium. Later in this video, I will discuss how you can find out what questions your company might be asking if you don't have premium. So having premium isn't a must, but it is definitely very, very helpful. 
and I did have premium in my study as well. So in my opinion, this part is very important because different companies have their unique style of interview questions. For example, for Bloomberg, yes, they do ask a lot of the basic data structure questions that every other company asks, but they also always throw in a hint of design. So if you practice those commonly asked um, Bloomberg design questions, you'll be more prepared for those interviews. Before you interview, you definitely want to try to do as many problems for that specific company as you can. So next, I'm going to teach you guys how to get organized. So we're going to do that by using the sessions management tool. So if you go over here to the side, you'll be able to see this little area called session. And if you click on this icon right here, it'll take you to the sessions management tool. This tool helps you keep track of the number of problems you solve as well as your success rate. So for example, if you're interviewing for say Twitter, you can kind of just keep track of your progress within that session. Another great way to use this tool is to keep track of the data structures that you're working on as well. So if you're new at learning data structures or you kind of want to track your progress with each data structure. So let's say that we really need to work on binary search. So we can just go ahead and create a session and activate that session by clicking on it. And then when we go to the problems page, we can use our tags to narrow down the questions specifically for binary search. Then over here in our sessions, little dashboard, we'll be able to see how many easy problems we successfully solved, medium as well as hard. And we can go ahead and use the same philosophy for if we are interviewing for a specific company. So like I said, if we're interviewing for Twitter, you can go ahead and click this Twitter session to get that session started. So now we're in the Twitter session and we can click on this button right here. If we have premium, we'll be able to see all of the questions that are popular for people who interview for Twitter. All right, so now that we know how to pick out our problems and organize our practice sessions, we can go ahead and dive into how to actually solve problems on code. So I'm going to pick this problem number five. So here at the top, you'll have a description and sometimes this description is a lot longer than this. And usually for medium problems, the description is a lot more complex. But in this case, the description is pretty straightforward. All right, so also on the left, you'll see inputs and outputs. So the inputs are pretty much what will be passed into your function. So in this case, we see that we will be passed in a string and it's gonna be passed into our function. And the output that is expected is this string. So you wanna kind of read the inputs and outputs to make sure that you're understanding the problem and that you know what's going to be passed into your function so that you can properly use it. Okay, so now let's jump into the right side. So over here is where you actually solve the problem. You can select your language. So I use JavaScript. This function that they provide is very important because this is the function that they will pass in the parameters as well as read for your returned result. So whatever this function is returning is what leak code will read so that they can determine if your program is working correctly. If you are solving more complex problems like very complex medium problems, you can definitely create extra functions outside of this function and call those functions inside of this function if you want to organize your code better. So for example, you could have something like this. And that, you know, you can kind of just like use these functions to help you organize your code better. This is definitely something that I utilize all the time. Um, I'm just a person that really likes to organize my code into separate functions. I don't like having one long function if the problem is complex, but this problem is pretty simple. So my solution was pretty straightforward. So I've already solved this problem. So I'm gonna just go ahead and paste in my code. So once you have your code ready, you can actually go ahead and run your code before you submit and lead code will test it against a default test case. Another thing that you can do is you can also use this as a debugger. I like to print to the console so that I can debug. I don't use their debugger, although I have heard great things about it, but even at work, I just prefer to use console logs. So that's one thing that you can do while you are problem solving. So for example, if this isn't returning the correct result for some reason, and I'm and my test case is failing, then I can just kind of print 
print different things throughout my program to monitor what's happening and kind of determine where the areas are that my function is failing. I also want to note that you are able to create your own test cases if you want to. Um, because like I said, if you do the run code option, they usually only run it against one test case. So if you want to try different edge cases and things like that to make sure that your code is working, you also are able to do that. Okay, now it's time to submit our code. Okay, so we did go ahead and submit our code. And over here, you can see that it was a success. It does tell you your runtime and how that compares to other submissions. So my code was about 47% faster than other online submissions and I saved about 82% more space than other submissions as well. And down here, it kind of tells you how many times you've submitted this code and just kind of like your track record. So whether or not you were successful in submitting your code, one thing that you should always do is check your solution tab so that you can make sure that you answer the question in the most optimal way. Because when it comes to interviewing, it's not about getting the question correct. You want to be optimal. So just because your solution works, there might have been a better way to solve it and you always want to check for areas of improvement. And if for some reason the solution tab is locked and you don't have premium, you can also go to the discussion board. And this is something that I'd also do after solving every problem. And I'll either type in or select the language that I'm using, which is JavaScript. And I'll just kind of go to the solution with the most likes. So this one has three likes, so that's pretty good. And then I can just kind of see what approach they took. So some people, as you can see right here, gives really nice explanations on their solutions or they might link it to a YouTube video and things like that. And those are solutions that I also really like to read. Also, if you're feeling confident in your solution, definitely post your solution. I find that posting my solution and typing out an explanation has helped me learn a lot because typically when I'm able to re-explain things, that means that at that point I have mastered it. Okay, so next I want to talk about Weak Code's kind of global discussion board. So if you go all the way to the top and press discuss, you'll see like a really huge discussion board. And here people kind of talk about their interviewing experiences um, and questions that they were asked and questions that they feel like that you should practice. So this is a great discussion board to learn more about the company that you're interviewing for. So for example, like I said earlier, if you're interviewing with say Twitter, you'll be able to see a lot of different problems that were asked by people who either took Twitter assessments or did Twitter interviews. And usually there's a lot of discussion underneath these posts. So for example, if I click on this, usually in these posts, people talk about their experience and they will link the question that they were asked or link another article that discusses that question. The next thing I wanna show you all is the mock assessments feature on LeetCode. If you go up here where it says interview and you click on assessment, you'll be able to see a list of a lot of different top companies along with practice assessments that you can complete if you have premium. So the reason why this part is really important is because at a lot of top companies, in order to even get an interview, you have to complete an assessment. The assessments are very similar to how lead code structures their questions. So they'll give you a problem with a description and the inputs and outputs and you pretty much type in your code and you are timed and you have to complete a number of problems within a certain period of time. So this gives you a good opportunity to practice um, common problems that are asked in those specific companies assessments. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, if you are interested in becoming a software engineer, I do have a how to become a software engineer at a top tech company video that you can check out. Also check out my video on all the cool benefits and pros and cons at working at a top tech company. If you like what you heard in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.